Uh, we are going to see the grave of the index case of the Ebola. The in the, the index case, we mean the first case, a bit of a businesswoman who was moving up and down. I think possibly contracted the disease from somewhere and then uh, came. And this is where we are going actually was our home. People didn't know, people didn't know. by that time people had not yet known that it was really Ebola. The home no longer exists. Her remains lie somewhere in this undergrowth. We've been trying to find her grave because where she's buried, many people run away and there is a bush. But finally, we found it. And there is not much to indicate that someone is buried here. But this is where Alice lies. They say Alice Langwen, patient zero as referred to in medical terms, died sometime towards the end of September in the year 2000. At that time, the disease she suffered from was still strange. Alice was 46 years old. She was married to the nephew of our news source, Iduru Okello. The nephew also died. And their children died. When we started experiencing it, we thought it was fever. With the increasing number of deaths, panic set in, and the sick were headed to Lachow Hospital. And we agreed that uh, this is most probably viral hemorrhagic fever. So we gave also information to the public. Iduru's wife was one of those who succumbed to Ebola. When they carried the dead body from the hospital to home, people were running away from us. Iduru's neighbor Otobi tells us that two more women died in Roto Bilo. People were vomiting blood, which were dark, and uh, they lost men. Most of those who attended the barrio came back to the village and died. The district had already alerted the Minister of Health, which sent a team from the Uganda Virus Research Institute. At that time, we had uh, suggested Lassa fever because when we went into the compounds of uh, uh, the people who had passed on, we found there were many rats. Alternatively, uh, we said it is Malbec because Malbec had just ended in uh, DRSC. And of course, again, we said alternatively it must be Ebola. We had not seen the kind uh, Ebola. Some of us read it in school and that was it. Infections were arising through three main channels. Barrios, where ritual contact with the deceased was a norm. Patients with multiple familial care providers and nosocomical or hospital-acquired infections, transmission from other patients or staff members. With help from the World Health Organization, samples were sent to the nearest lab, the National Institute of Virology in Johannesburg, South Africa, and within a week, on the 15th of October 2000, the results were returned. And it, the result confirmed that this was Ebola hemorrhagic fever, and the strain was the Sudan type. There and then we knew that we were dealing with a very dangerous condition. After realizing that it was the outbreak of Ebola, they refused now to bury. There was my neighbor called Ooma. When he died, no one touched his body for fear of contracting Ebola. The dogs almost ate him. So people accepted it was a disease, unlike what has happened in West Africa. Up to now, there are people who don't believe that Ebola is a disease. Miraculously, Otobi and Iduru did not contract the deadly virus. Michael Shankara, the Gulu district surveillance officer who was a training officer of the health workers and community leaders during the outbreak says that in the process, the infection was spreading away from Rotobilo. But St. Claude also, uh, you know, certain things also happen in a way that uh, it is a bit pr protective because as they go to, some, to a place, the other people also tend to to run away from them. A technical committee which later became a task force was formed. At that time we were able to reach every part of Gulu district within one hour. We had to inform the people that uh, this disease you don't touch. When you see the following symptoms, fever, diarrhea, vomiting, general weakness and bleeding. The people were only too happy to oblige. Then the search began. CDC Atlanta team set up a lab for the tasting. As early as 10 a.m., the surveillance team headed by Dr. Lutwama from the Uganda Virus Research Institute would be stationed in the villages. During those days, whenever you would lie down, the ambulance would come and get you, assuming you could be sick. Sometimes we, we had to take by 
by force. And that is how also we ended up actually uh, controlling the epidemic. Of course there was a lot of government support. Uh, I recall I had uh, a helicopter at my disposal. So this allowed quick response in all of these uh, places. It was a horrific time with no particular knowledge of how the outbreak started, even from the assumed patient zero. After the deaths of 224 people of the presumptive 425 were infected in the three districts of Gulu, with most deaths, Mbarara and Masindi, the country was declared free of Ebola on 28 February 2001. This was 42 days after the last infected case, twice the maximum incubation period for Ebola to develop. The disease claimed more women since most were caretakers and the youngest to die was a three-day-old child, according to WHO records. Florence Salimba, NTV.